Hello and welcome back to Hi-Fi Lo-Fi. Today I am looking at my Pioneer D05 DAT deck. DAT is digital audio tape. Now to a lot of people, DAT has never really been a thing. It's something that uh, many of us missed out on back in the day when it was introduced. It was a lot more popular in Japan, but due to certain complaints and resistance from the music industry outside of Japan, DAT never really took off. Although it did find a little bit of ground with professional recording artists, studios, etc. Which is a bit ironic because uh, the music industry was actually against DAT for the very reason that they felt that it was a risk to music piracy, as in you could make exact audio copies of CDs but actually DAT is a better quality sound to a CD in terms of the uh, sampling rate because the average DAT deck is uh, has a 48 kilohertz sampling rate whereas a CD is 44.1 so anyway we are looking at my Pioneer D05 and I bought this second hand about a year ago uh, that was totally off my radar until well, I'd heard of it but I, I didn't really know much about it and it was watching various videos on YouTube that got me interested and I decided to splash out on a used DAT deck because I don't think anybody makes them new anymore I don't think any anybody's made a new DAT deck for really quite some years anyway let's have a, a closer look so why did I choose this particular deck well I wasn't really sure which deck to choose but um, I was looking at various DAT decks and even here in Japan where DAT was probably the most popular it was difficult to find one that was in good condition and I, I bought it in a, in a used store called Book Off also known as Hard Off, rather curiously named and rather amusingly named Hard Off, where they sell used stuff such as used electronics. Now, this particular deck is from 1994, and something rather special about it is that it has a 96 kilohertz sampling rate. By the way, that legato link conversion is something to do with if you connect another Pioneer machine, um, namely a CD player. So if you connect a CD player to this, it has a particular link, uh, a particular cable, a particular connection for Pioneer products. So yeah, this is to connect, the Legato link is to connect uh, a, a, um, a Pioneer CD player with a, this particular deck. And I, I believe Legato also connected to other things as well, such as regular analog compact cassette players which uh, I've got a deck I'm going to show you in another video of another Pioneer machine right so as I said as far as I'm aware this is the only DAT deck that has this 96 kilohertz high sampling rate so that particularly interested me now as I said before that decks by default are 48 kilohertz. Now this particular deck, which is not unusual in the fact that if you can see down here, it's got LP, which is long play. It's got SP, which is short play. That is pretty typical for a lot of that decks. Uh, however, the, the other setting, the high sampling, that is very unusual and that is peculiar to this particular deck. You can see there some timer controls on the left bottom corner and power button. Next to that, as far as I'm aware, is the uh, receiver for the infrared remote control. There is the remote control. Pause your screen now if you want to take a closer look at the remote control. So. One thing about this particular deck is that you cannot see the tape 
as it's moving. So it's got this front loading tray that when it pops out the cassette tape goes in flat as in on its side horizontally. So we've got the transport controls, we've got uh, pretty standard transport controls there. Rather reminiscent of say a CD player or something of the period. I had a CD player in the one around 1990, 1989, 1990 I bought my first CD player and uh, those controls look rather similar. It's got a standard looking recall button but next to it it's got another button which seems to be something to do with record called lead in area. I will have to look at the manual to understand what that means because I really don't know. I can sort of guess but I'll check it out in the manual. Being that it's digital it's got so you can see there TOC. TOC stands for table of contents. That is something that uh, I'm familiar with on my mini disc players, mini disc decks. And um, auto ID, I don't know what that is, I'm gonna have to check it out. And character, that's to do with when you input the text information. So it does have a display, remember, it is digital, although it's, it's interesting because being that it is a, a, a cassette tape, it's a digital cassette tape, a digital audio tape, which is rather interesting. It is a kind of hybrid, isn't it? It's sort of got one foot in the old analog compact cassette era and another foot in the digital age. Now there was a lot of hostility towards DAT and there was a lot of resistance towards it because of its ability to record losslessly. So uh, it was sort of way ahead of its time in a, in a sense, because nowadays that's pretty standard, isn't it? Okay, so what else can I tell you about it? Well, let's have a look down here. What have we got down here? Uh, we've got um, a headphone socket. That's a standard old school larger headphone socket. And the level there, what the level meter is simply the volume control for the headphones output. We've also got the record balance left and right, that's simply as it says it's pretty simple, it's left and right channels uh, bias on the recording and a record level which again is pretty uh, self-explanatory, it affects the recording level. Right here we are looking at the back, so let's zoom in a bit here. So. On the left there, you can see analog RCA sockets, input, output, left and right channels, pretty straightforward. Here we've got the digital coaxial output, coaxial input, and we've got an optical input as well. Now I, here, I use the coaxial output to my amp because my Yamaha AS301 has a coaxial input. I connect one of the outputs of my amp, my amp has two outputs, and I connect one of them to the input here. And there we are, if that's of any interest to you. So uh, we've got a power lead down there in the bottom corner. Made in Japan, hopefully that's a good thing. It usually means good quality. And obviously this is one made for the Japanese market. That's why it's 100 volt and uh, 50, 60 hertz, because in Japan, uh, depending on the part of Japan you're in, half of Japan is 50 hertz, half is 60 hertz. But luckily we don't have to worry about that. I will say that the machine is in pretty good condition, by the way. I mean, I did buy it last year, which was 2020, and it was made in, uh, it was released in 1994. So, you know, this machine is about 20, well, it was, when I bought it, it was, you know, 26 years old. And um, it's in pretty good condition, I have to say, very impressive. 
There's a slight nick on the front here, which is really nothing at all. I mean, nothing to worry about for something that's uh, 26 years old. So it did come with the manual and um, I'm gonna look at that now because there is something that if you've got one of these machines, there is something that uh, you need to know about this machine. So SP for short play is the standard 48 kilohertz sampling rate and the LP is long play which is actually 32 kilohertz sampling rate. Now I'm going to look at the manual now and give you some more technical specs on that. So I've got the manual here and there's some technical specs on the back. Now interestingly when I got this uh, it's got this green sheet, this additional sheet of information put in with the manual. And this is rather interesting because it gives us information, it claims, that is not in the manual. So what they're saying on this green sheet is that there is this little trick you can do to set the sampling rate to 44.1. Now 44.1 kilohertz is what a CD is. So if you're going to record from a CD, or if you want to create a master tape that is for transferring to CD, because that's what a lot of people did with the uh, digital audio tape, then you need to know this little trick on how to set the sampling rate to 44.1. And it does recommend for CD, either recording from a CD or recording to a CD, it does recommend to use this little trick. And I'm going to show you what that is when I've plugged it in and tried it. I've never tried it before and it wasn't until I actually bothered to get the manual out and have a look at it. And uh, it takes me a little bit longer to read a manual in a foreign language like Japanese. But uh, I had a look at it today and I studied it in detail and I think I've understood what they're getting at. Let's have a look at some of the other technical specs. So, sorry about the shadow on it. I, I'm, I'm just an amateur in my kitchen, on the kitchen table and it's uh, really... Uh, not much I can do about it, I'm afraid. I don't have any professional equipment. I will put some screenshots up in the video so you can get a better idea. But yeah, I know it's in Japanese and you may not understand Japanese. However, certain things like numbers and the alphabet, you can probably figure out what they're getting at. If you're using the high sampling 96 kilohertz, it says that it's got a frequency response of five hertz up to 44 kilohertz. If you're using the short play, that's the standard by default for digital audio tape, 48 kilohertz sampling rate, then it's got a frequency response of five hertz to 22 kilohertz. And if you've, you're using the long play setting, it's got a frequency response of 5 hertz to 14.5 kilohertz according to this. Signal to noise ratio of 91 decibels. And I just want to come back down to this again. Now, if you're using the short play mode, which is the regular mode on most DAT decks, that means the given time, the given length of the tape is set to what this deck calls short play. So if, for example, you've got a 120 minute tape, then you'll get 120 minutes in the short play mode. However, if you're using the high sampling rate, it will pass the tape over the head twice as fast. So that means that if you're using a 120 minute tape, you'll only get 60 minutes if you're using the high sampling rate. And conversely, if you use the LP, the long play mode, you will get double the amount of time. So if you're using a 120 minute cassette tape in long play mode, you will actually get 
240 minutes from your recording. So there's a brief description of the Pioneer D05 DAT deck. Let's get it rigged up and see how it performs.